Are Dwarven Forge tiles worth it? Yes, I think they're worth it. And I'll share with you why I think they're worth it and why I came from building cardboard battle maps like this one to now pretty in-depth, really cool ones using Dwarven Forge tiles and why I wish I got them sooner. So when I got into Dungeons and Dragons, I was, you know, trying to learn as much about the game that I possibly could. And I was seeing what other people were doing, what other expert people were playing with. And they had these fully painted minis, <coughs> oh, excuse me, these fully like designed, beautiful battle maps with every little inch of detail like they'll say there's a torch in the room and there's like an actual torch or there's ruins and there's ruins on that battlefield. And I thought, am I ever going to get to that level of playing Dungeons and Dragons? Part of me was like, I kind of want to, but then I kind of didn't because there's something beautiful about having theater of the mind combat encounters where you got to like man manipulate or like think in your head where everything is positioned. And that's how I started playing Dungeons and Dragons is with theater of the mind combat. And it was, it was complicated. It was a lot of stopping and explaining of like, where's that guy again? What's the positioning on him? What's the range? And it went from that to us taking big sheets of paper and then drawing maps out on that. And we were just kind of guesstimating what 30 feet is and stuff like that. Also was a flawed system, but it was better. And we bought unpainted minis. So I was starting to get into the 3D aspect of the combat encounters. That's when I realized that the tactical combat portion of Dungeons and Dragons was actually something really fun and something that I valued a lot, which is why I invested in, let me get it, this. These are large dry erase battle mats. They actually have a grid over them and they come in different styles. Like there's a cobblestone one, a sand one, a water one, a generic like dungeon crawl-esque type of color and a white one. Oh yeah, and a wood one as well. They also came in like this fancy tube that looks like a tower, which actually doubles over into my game because I use it as Strahd's tower because we're playing through uh, Curse of Strahd right now. But this dry, like this is a collection of dry erase mats that upped the quality of my Dungeons and Dragons game. And for any DMs looking for like a cheap battle mat solution, I highly recommend this one. Link in the description below. But after getting that, I was like, okay, now I have like the coloring of my battleground set. So I got into D&D &D miniature painting, which also upped the game and I, and that's when I realized, wow, actually creating tactical and interesting looking battle mats is fun. It, it makes the game a lot more <laughs> dynamic. That's when I got into like actually putting more physical scenic terrain. I started putting like little trees on there as well. Finding like rocks uh, for like army soldier men like at thrift stores that I would put down to make rock scenery. And I really valued starting to build up that 3D terrain because that was the tactical like line of sight and the entire just battle was visually appealing. And battles, I don't know, they became more fun, more interesting to me and I think to all my players. And because I got into building like 3D terrain on top of this battle mat grid, I was experimenting with, you know, different things that I could do with it. One of which was I ordered some HeroScape tiles because those are stackable upon each other, although they're grid, so moving on the map was kind of hard, so I decided not to go with them. And then I got into actually using like styrofoam, um, this pink insulation foam, and making Dungeons and Dragons actual like tiles out of them. But that is a very long and complex process, and really they came out really ugly, so. Maybe I'll like stack them all together to make it look like a cliff, but I feel embarrassed to use them. And then another thing that I tried doing when I 
was experimenting with this 3D terrain is I had a lot of cardboard lying around. So I started actually building stuff with cardboard and drawing out the one inch grid squares. This was fun, but it took ages and it, it took forever. Like building the insulation foam dungeon tiles, that, that took a very long time. And then building things like this, this is their Waterdeep bar that they own from the Waterdeep campaign. I wanted to physically build one so my characters can feel like, oh, we like actually own something. You know, it's tangible. You can actually see the bar. I liked using the cardboard, but it took ages to create something, to glue the pieces together. So most of the time, I even though I tried these different like three-dimensional effects, I always ended up just going back to, you know, dry erase marker and then those dry erase boards that I was talking about earlier. Until I stumbled over dungeon tiles from Dungeons and Dragons. Let me grab those. These things. These things are really, really cool. And they actually really ups my game at, of creating very cool scenic battle maps. Like this square is a piece of a house and it's got the one inch grids and they're just like little squares so they don't really necessarily distract you from anything. Like over here, this is town square and here's a fountain. And you can just plop this down and then there's like road pieces that you can put next to this one. Oh, look at that. Here's a town square and another town square you combine together. And there's all sorts of different types of them. There's forest ones, there's sewer, there's city ones, there's actual dungeon ones, house ones. I actually used most of these dungeon tiles to actually play through the Waterdeep campaign because I was actually building city streets and houses using these tiles. So if you want to get a little like more niche into what you're playing through, say it be a forest or a dungeon or a city, there's links down below to these, which I highly recommend. I actually do still use these to this day. But my problem with those is that they're limiting because they give you a set amount of pieces and you kind of have to put them together and try to get the system to work. I wanted something more freeing. And this is where the moment happened where I stumbled over Dwarven Forge. And I was pretty intimidated because Dwarven Forge tiles are very expensive. They have quite the big price point to get into. And I was tough. And I was talking to my other friend who's a DM for a long time about whether or not I should buy into Dwarven Forge. What he wanted to do was to get a 3D printer and 3D print dungeon tiles. And for me, I was thinking, okay, why don't you do that while I buy a starter set of Dwarven Forge tiles? And then we'll come back and we'll see how each kind of works out together. So he spent a month 3D printing uh, these dungeon tiles and I purchased the Dwarven Forge starter set. So those pieces came in and we regrouped and looked at each other's tiles. And man, did he get just, he got so sad. He just didn't like his tiles anymore. Cause apparently 3D printing has a lot of problems with it and things come out warped and things come out messed up and things you have to sand down. And he built a, dungeon system uh, the, where the dungeon blocks actually lock together, but they're hard to put together and they're hard to take apart. And they didn't have the detail that a Dwarven Forge tile does. And what I really love about the Dwarven Forge pieces is they're magnetic at the bottom. So say we take this little, uh, half of a dungeon room that I've built right here. And this is all on a metallic like sheet. So this piece clicks, sticks, and it stays there. And I'm not afraid to tip this thing over, even completely. Look, they stay exactly where they are. So if my players are exploring a dungeon, I can just whoop, put in the boss room, the boss encounter which was kind of the reason why I got the starter set of Dwarven Forge in the first place, because 
I know these tiles are expensive, and that's why it took me a long time to get into it. So when I got the Dwarven Forge tile and my friend 3D printed his tiles, our discussion was, we'll use all the other pieces he 3D printed as the dungeon crawl. And then the Dwarven Forge tiles, they're going to be the final boss room because they're the coolest looking pieces that make the scenery look absolutely fantastic. But what ended up actually happening is we just ended up using the Dwarven Forge tiles for everything. Cause really they're easy to change very fast. Oh, you explored this room of the dungeon. Okay, let me just take my starter set and take some of these pieces, put them over here and build another dungeon like within minutes. As long as like I have a general idea of what it looks like. And what I really appreciate about the Dwarven Forge tiles is I can make the dungeon beforehand. So what I ended up doing is I went to the thrift store and I bought a big whiteboard that's magnetic and I take the Dwarven Forge tiles before a session and I build the encounter there. Take, for example, this encounter. This is the Wizards of the Wine House from Curse of Strahd. And this is me using the Dwarven Forge tiles to build what the encounter or even like the room is gonna look like. It doesn't necessarily have to be the encounter. I tend to build these and cover them up with black sheets of paper so my players can go around and explore the rooms. And when they enter a room, I just take the black sheet of paper and lift it off. It actually encourages exploration and it does it in quite the fun way. So after taking that Dwarven Forge starter set and running with it for a couple months, I realized that, man, I really do love these pieces. I wish I invested into them sooner because I use them every single session. And I have two other friends who are also DMs that I also play in games with. So they'll come over or they'll request what Dwarven features or what Dwarven Forge pieces that they need before their session. And then my Dwarven Forge pieces kind of just get split upon three different D&D campaigns. So what started off as a starter set, eventually I decided, you know, I use these pieces often and I love them. And my friends who are also DMs asked if they could use my Dwarven Forge pieces as well for their campaigns, which of course, get as much use as you want out of them. They're fantastic. They're kind of like adult Legos, but they're indestructible because th like 3D printed stuff is very fragile. These Dwarven Forge pieces, apparently they say they're like built out of Dwarvenite. You can actually chuck them and throw them at stuff and they're fine. Like I'll drop him and not worry about it at all. So these are like, yeah, they're my adult Legos that, you know, I'm going to be playing Dungeons and Dragons for a very long time because I love this game. And really, I wish I made the investment to Dwarven Forge tiles sooner because creating my own dungeon tiles was a mess. Buying into bad dungeon tiles was a mess. And building cardboard encounters just took way too much of my time that I wish I would have just bought Dwarven Forge tiles. And then this thing, I could build this thing in just a couple minutes using the tiles I have right now. So if you're curious about investing into Dwarven Forge tiles, do it, absolutely do it. Don't go crazy and buy all the pieces of like everything. Just get the starter set. They're actually selling the starter set on Amazon right now. There's a link in the description below, but you could also get them off the Dwarven Forge website as well. But get the starter set and see if you like it. Use it for your boss encounter. Use it if you have extra pieces for a secondary encounter, which you might, because you get a lot of pieces in the starter set. And then if you do want to do more with it, ramp up. And to me, like... Again, they're adult Legos. They're, they're things I'm gonna be using for the rest of my life. And these Dwarven Forge tiles, I'm gonna pass down to my kids. And then they can do whatever Dungeons and Dragons or whatever game comes out later at that point in their life that they could also carry those pieces over for as well. I think they're fantastic. I think everyone should at least try the starter set. See if you like it because trust me, I think you will. All right, 
This has been Tony Sticks, and may you have very dynamic Dungeons and Dragons encounters. Take care. He's gotta throw things only. He can't melee us. We're all gonna Unless die. <laughs>